So if I were to ask you to imagine mowing the lawn, something like this is probably what would come into your mind. But what if in the near future, this is what mowing the lawn looks like? Well, I had a chance to take a look at Scythe's M52 robotic mower recently. One of the many comments I hear about people's opposition to robotic mowers is just not being smart enough. Well, this robot can actually tell the difference between grass, landscape beds, traffic cones, light poles, chunks of concrete in the yard. And based on its computer learning, it will know how to move around those. Now, the way it sees all these things is with eight HDR or high dynamic range cameras that provide 360 degrees of vision. The two black knobs on either side allow it to communicate via Wi-Fi and cellular networks. The white bulb on top is the GPS receiver, which helps track and guide the mower's movement as it follows its path. This latest design of the mower also has 360 degree ultrasonic sensors that is for safety and obstacle detection. It's also got a bump sensor in it as well. There's user controllable throttles and inputs. There's this entire interface system that's driven off of an LCD screen. Here you see a master on off switch for the machine. It's got three motors that drive the deck blade. It's got another two for wheel motors. Very neat piece of machinery that may do more than what you think it can. Let's take a look. So the triggers control and squeezing with your fingers is what drives you forward and pushing with your thumbs is what puts you backwards. I feel as though I'm entering a brave new world of technology where man and machine truly become one. Now let's see if I can do this without killing myself. So it's very, very quiet. There's definitely a little bit of a learning curve on transitioning your movement. So for the past five years, I've been used to either a zero turn doing this or a stand on, you know, squeezing, transitioning all that just into two little fingers. It's saying it's sensitive isn't the right word, but it just requires so little force for input. It's just something you've got to relearn. It'll get up and go too. <laughs> if you're not, you need one of those like uh, treadmill safety switches that clips to the, oh, it'll shut off. So like back where that little pump thing is, their biggest mistake of the day, they're letting me drive this thing. It's definitely gonna take a while before I would say I'm an expert at driving this, but it's really quite nice. Again, the biggest trick is just, you're steering this thing with just your fingertips. almost slung myself off of it. <laughs> so this is Kevin. He is going to now set a perimeter with the Scythe Robotics mower. So the way that this works is uh, whenever you first show up to a property, you've got to set the perimeter so it knows where it's mowing and where the perimeter is. So how do we do that? Yep, so right now it's in parked. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it to drive. Uh, so now that's when I can actually uh, drive it manually um, and then Literally, I just hit create task. Uh, so it's this little guy here. Um, I just hit, and then now it says drive mower around desired perimeter. So he's just gonna do a little tiny square for demonstration purposes, but you can see how if you were doing this entire field, something like this, where it's gonna be mowing on its own while you're string trimming, that could be a big savings in time and labor. Are there any maximums to the geofence it'll allow? We haven't run across them yet. We used to have a problem when we went to larger areas, mm -hmm. um, but now we solved for those no problem. Complex shapes mm -hmm. solve no problem. So this is usually when I would adjust the deck height. So maybe down to three and a half. Uh, you just hit finish. Then it says turn to smart mode. I'll just turn. It says keep the remote. And that remote is what Kevin's wearing here that's got this big red emergency stop button. There we go. So now take a couple steps back. Uh, so you're still too close. Is that what that flash in yellow means? Yep. If I was this close while it was operating, would it shut off? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a perimeter of safety around the 
So now if I if I come up on this, it'll it'll see see me. You want to go from the front? From the front. <laughs> <laughs> just because the rear discharge. Oh, got it, got it, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna see how the uh, how the autonomous sensing goes. Putting my life on the line for you guys. <laughs> I'm I'm ready to leap out of the way. So it sees that cone. Oh, look at that! If you show up in ten feet, it's gonna say no. I, something's in the way. But if I leave that 10 feet it should pick back up so if it runs into a human and that human leaves it will resume on its own without somebody's interference yeah but for things where it doesn't recognize like a cone we saw that over there that cone it uh it slowed down a little bit but it didn't stop but there are some things that could trigger it to send a, a message to an app and say I need some direction. Yeah, exactly. So it does three passes, three perimeter passes, and then it'll stripe back and forth. And I guess that's to make sure it's got enough room to do the turnarounds exactly. as you're doing the stripes. So now it's finished its whole perimeter that we drove out. You can see those lines. Those are very straight. Those are straighter than I know I would have ever been able to make. Man, this is just like you took one of those uh, GPS tractors from John Deere or something and set it up on a hay field. So the other thing you can do if you don't want to hop up on there, Kevin is just using his mobile device. He's got a little joystick and he's just driving it around. So how far will that work? Probably. 30 yards so it's Wi-Fi from these little knobs from both of those to yeah. the phone so your phone will play some role in that so that was a, a striping pattern that you'll be able to to set in you can have a bunch of different options for how you want this thing to mow but what Kevin's gonna set up now for us is a spiral so if you've got a property where you know either it's round or your customer wants some kind of a spiral thing you can actually do that so we'll take a look here this is Isaac. He was telling me that uh, this model that you're seeing, they're still in the process of refining these for production. So this is not a production model. This is the fourth, the fourth uh, iteration of a machine they've had. You said maybe another two before your full, full commercial bore selling. Yeah, another probably. One or two. Yeah. So the next generation is going to be getting deployed with some select customers mm -hmm. in the markets that we're able to test in annually. Uh, and then the generation after that is when we're hoping to put in a mass production. Got it. So if you're seeing this and saying, oh, that would never work for me because of blah, 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 because I know what you people in the comments like to do. <laughs> yeah, this isn't this isn't a final machine. This is still just uh, another phase of refining the software, the hardware, the processes, all that good stuff. I think it's the magnet. If you can just put the magnet. Like... It's messing that up. Yeah. Really? So I was tracking good and then I came over by you guys and it kind of started. Kevin was driving past trying to set the spiral up and it was tracking fine until it got next to my GoPro mount. So the magnets were, so these are, these are all the things you've got to uh, learn about that are issues and figure out how to solve when you're dealing with autonomous mowers. It's pretty neat to, you know, think about all the different things that go into it. Isaac was just saying that based on where the computer processor was, where they had placed it, it was throwing off sensors in one of the first things. Did it not like the cone? cone. So I don't know if you saw it, but it's paused here for a moment because it saw this cone, this giant chunk of concrete, and it figured out what it was and then it started itself back up. So that's a lot of the technology that's going into this too is making that machine realize what certain obstacles are, 
are they obstacles I as the mower can mow safely around or do I need human input to figure out what to do with these things? Is this something that I can just drive it up onto my Harbor Freight lift and jack it up at whatever degree and just with an impact gun, but, 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 like I do with my gas? Yep, exactly. We are going to essentially steer this or attempt to steer this with the app. So now we put our thumb on and we can try and turn it to the left and go forward and turn a left a little more and go forward. So this way you can actually control this without having to get on it. And turn it left, not run myself over. That's this is some really neat stuff they've got here. And then if we want to back up. And then if we go forward. Too cool. So there's your first look at Scythe's M52 robot mower. It's a lot of neat technology they've got here. A lot of fun ideas for applying this in the real world. At this point, not for somebody like me, right? A solo guy working a few days a week. This is not the application for this technology. But if you look at it with an open mind at the kind of cost savings or labor savings that it will allow you to achieve, it's a really neat idea and I can definitely see the appeal. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it.